In this lesson, we'll start creating objects. We'll be covering how to create basic shapes, how to draw lines, create text, and we'll cover some more advanced shapes such as polygons and auto shapes as well. Before we cover drawing shapes and objects, there is some terminology we should review. An open object is an object where the starting point and ending point do not meet. Lines, arcs, and curves are examples of an open object. Open objects cannot have a color or gradient fill. Closed objects, as you may have guessed, are objects that don't have endpoints. Rectangles, squares, circles, text are all examples of closed objects. They are called closed because they can have a fill. In fact, and we'll be getting into this later, to test to see if an object is open or closed, apply a fill to it. If the object accepts the fill, it's closed. If it doesn't show a fill, then it's open. The first four drawing tools are the line, rectangle, rounded rectangle, and circle ellipse tool. The four drawing tools use the same steps to draw. Let's start with the rectangle tool. Let's select the tool to activate it. Next, click the mouse once to start drawing the object. Move the mouse cursor and the objects will start to form. When the object's size and shape is to our liking, click the mouse again and the object is formed. This method is used for the other drawing tools we are discussing. Let's activate the line tool. Click once to start the line. Move the mouse cursor and the line starts to form. When the line is to our liking, click the mouse again and the line is formed. By the way, objects can be formed by clicking and holding the mouse. Once the mouse is released, the object is formed. Let's create a rounded rectangle. Activate the rounded rectangle by clicking on the tool button. Click, hold, and drag the mouse, and the shape starts to form. When the shape is the way we like it, then release the mouse, and the shape is formed. Holding down alternative keys, like the Shift, Alt key, or on the Mac, the Option key, can offer some nice effects when drawing these shapes. For instance, let's draw an ellipse. We can activate the ellipse tool by clicking on the tool icon and click the first point to start drawing the ellipse. As you can see, we have the freedom to draw and manipulate how the shape looks as we move the mouse around. But notice what happens when the Alt key is held down while in this mode. It forces the ellipse to be drawn from the center. While in this mode, let's release the Alt key and hold down the Shift key and notice what happens. It forces the ellipse into a perfect circle. Finally, let's hold the Shift and Alt keys together. This would be the Shift and Options key on the Mac. And we get a perfect circle drawn from the center. While the Shift key maintains the proportions of the three shapes, it has a different effect when drawing lines. Let's activate the Line tool by clicking on its tool icon. To draw a line, click the first point and the line starts to form. Here we can drag the line freely. But once the Shift key is pressed, the line is then forced to be horizontal at a 45 degree angle or vertical from the start point. As a note, the Alt key or Options key on the Mac do not have any effect on the rectangle, rounded rectangle, or the line tools. When drawing certain objects, such as a rounded rectangle, the drawn shape will often have grab handles. These grab handles can be used for reshaping the objects. For instance, notice that there are these red grab handles on the corners of a rounded rectangle. Grabbing one of these handles will reshape one side of the rounded corner. To move both of them simultaneously, hold the shift key and both ends of the rounded corner will adjust simultaneously. As you draw the different shapes, be sure to look for the grab handles to adjust the shape. The next six drawing tools are more advanced in their ability to draw more complex objects than simple lines, circles, and rectangles. 
The Polygon tool draws multiple segmented lines. When this tool is activated, after clicking the first point, the tool will draw a line segment upon each mouse click from that point on. To stop the lines from continuing to draw, double click the mouse. Or if the final point aligns with the starting point, click once and the object will become closed. Clicking Undo will revert to the last point. Holding down the Shift key on your keyboard while drawing polygon line segments will force them to be vertical, horizontal, or at a 45 degree direction from the last point clicked. The Curved Shape tool operates exactly as the Polygon tool, except that it draws a curved line between each point. The Freehand Drawing tool will draw a continuous freeform line. To draw with this tool, activate it by clicking on the tool. Now click, hold, and drag the mouse. A line will continue to be formed with intersecting editing points until the mouse button is released. A closed shape is created if the end point aligns with the start point. The Arc tool will draw an arc. Drawing an arc consists of clicking on the mouse three times. The first click will establish the center point of the arc. Next, drag the mouse and click a second time to establish the radius of the arc. Drag the mouse again and the arc starts to form. When the desired arc angle is reached, clicking the mouse a third time will create the arc. Notice too that once it is formed, it can be reshaped by using this slider bar in the middle of the arc, which changes the radius of the arc. The Auto Shapes tool is one of the drawing tools that uses the side panel. Clicking on the icon button displays different shapes that can be drawn, from the most basic shapes to more complex shapes. Each shape type can then be adjusted by use of the control handles and the control slider. There's not enough time in this video to explain all the handles on all the shapes, but let's take one of the shapes and show how it is drawn and reshaped. We'll select this shape. Click on the preview area to start the shape. Drag the mouse to the desired size and click the mouse again to set the shape. What we want to create is a shape that looks somewhat like a flower. We do this by clicking and dragging the red grab handle that changes the shape of the object. Now we can increase the number of petals by dragging the slider. Typically, the white handle generally affects the size of the object. The red handle and the slider, on the other hand, affect the shape of the object. Creating text in GraphTech Studio is very similar to using a word processor. It gives you access to fonts and styles that are a part of your system, as well as to other features such as character and line spacing. To create text, simply click on the text tool located on the left-hand side of the software screen. This will automatically display the text settings in the side panel, where the font, style, and other adjustments can be selected for your text. Go ahead and click on the media page in the preview area. A red blinking cursor will appear. Start typing. To add a new line, press enter. Press backspace to remove the character to the left of the character. Press delete to remove the character to the right of the character. The control bar at the very right of the text adjusts the text box's width. As the control bar is moved left or right, the text wrap will adjust, moving whole words to the next line. At the lower left corner of the text box is a control handle for moving the text. If the control handle is selected when moving the text near the path of a shape, it will snap the text onto the path of the shape. When you are finished working with the text and you're finished with the text editing mode, simply click anywhere outside the text, which is represented by this thin green outline.
In order to change the text, the properties of the text, or parts of the text, just double click on the text. This places the text object into the text editing mode. Next, highlight or select the text that needs to be changed or adjusted. Similar to a word processor, this is done by moving the mouse over the first character to be altered, then click, hold, and drag the mouse to highlight the text. The text settings in the side panel can alter the highlighted text. Let's review some of the settings. On the top is the font list. This list has all the fonts loaded on your system, allowing you to use them in your designs. Simply scroll down the list and select a font to be used, and the highlighted text will be changed. To find a particular font, type the name in this box here, and it will transport the list to the fonts with that name. For instance, if we wanted to use Helvetica as our font, we can just type the first couple of letters and the system automatically fills in the font name that closely matches what we have typed in. It will also display the font in the list below. Font styles adjust the look or style of the font. The general font styles are bold, italicized, and underlined. Click on the font style to enable it. Click on it again to disable it. Keep in mind that some fonts have more styles than others. So if you don't see a bold version of your font, it just means that your system doesn't have that version or style of the font. Text alignment will align the text within the text box, either to the left edge, right edge, or center. Fully Justified will place spacing between words to expand the text so that both edges extend to the limits of the text box. Text size is always in points. If you are not used to working in points, just remember that 1 inch equals 72 points, half an inch equals 36 points, and so on. Character spacing determines the amount of space between each character for cases where you'd like to spread out the letters or contract them. Line spacing determines the amount of space between each line. Let's talk a little more about placing text on a path. As mentioned, this grab handle is what allows us to move the text to a different location while in the text edit mode. As we drag the text close to a path, it will snap to that shape and place the text around the object. Once the text is placed on a path, it can then be moved around the shape to a desired location. Let's move the text away from the shape and it becomes normal. Let's move the text toward the shape again, but this time move it toward the center and the text is placed inside the shape. Let's drag it away from the center again and place it on the outside of the shape or path. Notice that there is a slider grab handle. This is for adjusting the baseline of the text relative to the path it is placed on. If we move the slider up, the text baseline is distanced away from the shape. If the slider is moved down, the text baseline is distanced closer to the center of the shape. 